Welcome back, YouTube. Field thanks. Video number 29. Getting there. Nearly done. Get the uh, sender float wire bent here. And uh, get that installed pretty quickly. I think I do some test fits. And we'll get it uh, like test installed before we come back for sealant. Ah, yep, yeah, it was test installed really quickly. Now it's time for just to seal it in a little bit. Uh, bad transition there, but whatever. Um, yeah, I learned a bit from the first one on this too. Uh, fuel tank sender. <laughs> Read the directions fully. They do spe specify to try to um, leave a sealant gap between the rib and the sender. I think I probably secured the right one a little bit too closely to the rib. The left one might still be a little bit close, but at least it's got some space to work. Um, the reason for that is that if you want to replace the sender later in life, you can cut the se you can sort of run a blade through there and cut the sealant out between, and it should come apart nicely without damaging the metal. So anyway, uh, yeah, I sealed both the inside and the outside there. And then I think we're going to go um, maybe right into the baffle here. Yes, this is the baffle. Uh, this is almost done. There's only one more fuel tank video after this one. And for the baffle, uh, this side, I mixed up something like 200 grams of sealant. Um, it was actually too much. I used quite a bit on the on the right tank, thinking I was going to use similar amounts on the left tank. I think it was just because I mixed up two batches with the right tank that it ended up requiring so much, because it sticks to everything, and um, you know you end up using more than you think you do. So, or then, yeah, I probably threw away a good fifty to seventy grams of it after uh, the baffle here. So. I love piping. It was actually a lot of fun uh, using piping it onto the tank like that. I don't know why. It's just kind of silly to, to think like that. But yeah, make sure it's in there. They suggest a couple, I don't even know, like the bead should be about the size of an AN3 bolt shank. Um, and then it should be just in front of the rivet line. So do that. Put uh, put the baffle in and uh, Cleco it in place in all the places where we had uh, not countersunk to make sure it aligns nicely. And then uh, immediately jump into um, putting rivets, closed end rivets, in the um, positions that don't have Z brackets. That is to make sure the baffle squeezes down to the ribs very nicely and then you go back and set um, the rivets between the baffle and the skin. So I also did this thing where I put it on the desk and you just briefly saw it. You ever see those um, like how it's made chocolate candies or something like that. A lot of times they'll put um, something that needs to be flat or something that needs to settle down into a place on like a shaker table. And so um, I took the tank, set it nose up and sort of like shook it pretty vigorously against the workbench. So that way, hopefully the bead of sealant would sort of settle down into the corners really nicely. I don't know if it made any difference. Eh, we'll see. Uh, but anything that can help make sure that that bead of sealant sets nicely between the baffle, the aft ribs, and the skin is something that, you know, takes three minutes to do, do it, in my opinion. Um, whatever works best for you, though. So yeah, just do back, uh, go back and do the countersinks that were not countersunk, put some rivets in them, fill them in. 
Next one, I'm going to install the Z brackets and take you on a little tour of the completed tank. So stop by next time to see how it looks when it's done. Thanks for... Bye.